Om. Hello, welcome, friends. I'm Dom. This is Dom Sketchcast. I'm Dom. This is Dom Sketchcast. I'm Dom, and this is Dom Sketchcast. That's what you're watching. You're watching Dom Sketchcast. That's what you're listening to. You're listening to Dom Sketchcast. Today, we have a very special show. We have a very special show. But before I tell you the details about what's going to happen in this very special show, I got an announcement to tell you about. A very nice announcement, a very exciting event that's going to be happening live in Meat Space, in real Meat Space. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be lovely. I dare say tremendous. It's going to be happening at Shinola Watch Store at Logan Circle in D.C. It's going to be happening in the DMV, Wednesday, October 30th, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. I'm going to be drawing live. I'm going to be talking live. I'm going to be playing music live. Me, as you see me, my face, my bones, my blood, my hair follicles will be there. I'll be playing fire-ass music, specifically a lot of hip-hop and experimental, up-tempo, instrumental beats. Prints will be for sale. All of them will be signed. Some of them will be... Limited edition. Really cool, best-selling prints will be there. I'll be also selling stickers. There's an Eventbrite link in the description below for you to check out, for you to sign up, get more information about this show. Hopefully, you can be there if you're a local specifically. Admission is free. Drinks will be free. To get a drink, obviously, you'll need to be 21 plus. But it's going to be fantastic. I hope you come through. If you do come through, shake my hand, pat me on the shoulder. Don't talk to me too much, though. All right? Stay back. Because I'll be drawing. I hope to see you guys there. Very excited about this. Thank you. This episode is very exciting for me. Because I talked to one of my good friends, one of my good companions, one of the best artists, Anna the Unknown. From somewhere in Europe. Anna is from one of those cold places. I had a very interesting conversation with Anna that you're about to witness. Um, I'll preface this by saying this. Artists don't talk about the nitty gritty about how they create things. Because the reality is we don't know. We don't know how and where these things come from. But you're going to get to see an inside look into how we create. Anna and I had a conversation about two specific characters, two original characters. Mine, which is Anxiety Bear, one of the many characters I've created, but who is becoming very solid and is becoming more and more real as I keep talking about her. And Anna's original character, Jeffrey, who you may have seen in Future Late Show. Or maybe you've seen Jeffrey hanging around on Instagram. Maybe you've seen Jeffrey hanging around on Twitter or something like that. Jeffrey tends to come up every once in a while. He's a beautiful red boy, and he has French fry hair. Uh, specifically in this conversation, we talk about the intentions behind these characters. We talk about where they come from in terms of our personalities, in terms of a lot of our anxieties and fears creatively and just as humans, where these things come from. I had a great talk with Anna. It's a very neat conversation with them that I think you're really going to enjoy, especially if you're an artist, even if you're not a creative. I want you to understand how we do things. This is really in-depth. This is inside baseball, but it's fun. Even if you're not into baseball, baseball in this case being fantastic illustrations by fantastic illustrators. All right, enjoy. It's me, your boy, Dom, and it's Anna the Unknown. Hey, what's I up? Probably should have let you, I probably should have let you introduce yourself. Please introduce yourself. Okay, to I'm Anna the Unknown. I use they, them pronouns, and uh, you can find me as the animator on Twitter or Anna the Unknown uh, everywhere else on social media. You should lead with your social media and then the pronouns. I yeah? Think. Do you think? Okay, then like... I don't know. I, I think yeah, that's... It's like, the sometimes tango I thing. Wonder, yeah? yeah? Sometimes I And this is obviously not for me to, to tell you... Of how course. to I, it's just interesting to me i go on social media and it's like mm -hmm. what do i'm interested in how gender non-binary people present themselves usually it's like pronoun then the art thing and yeah. i me seeing that so often maybe that's a thing of like maybe i'll let you explain oh well like uh it's it's pretty simple actually it's the fact that it's the thing that gets the most ignored and therefore it has okay. to be salient uh, and, and I've noticed that a lot of people who are allies are also joining in, 
even if they're cisgendered, they go, hey, uh, these are also my pronouns. You can have them here on uh, on my profile page. And and I think that that's, uh, that's a wonderful sort of way of showing that, hey, asking for pronouns should be a normalized thing because we assume a lot of things. And, uh, and I also see it from like cisgendered friends that get assumed to be mm. either non-binary or another gender than the one that they are. And it's like, oh, okay. So, uh, so, so you're telling me that those are your pronouns, and that's, uh, and that's how I should address you. And hey, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use that, and that's pretty cool. Uh, and in other, in other, in other ways, like I see a lot of people also uh, just, uh, just either not address it, or only if, only if they are asked, then, then they will, then they will uh, bring it up. But I mean, it's. Uh, it also depends on like how built your audience is. So like at the moment, mm. since since I'm mostly just started, uh, it's it's good to have that because otherwise just people are gonna assume stuff. Oh, I get it a lot on 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 Twitch when I'm streaming and a new person joins in, then they're like, oh, but like oh hey you you sexy you beautiful and stuff like that. I was like, we actually had we actually had a thing in like our video. That where we were where we were talking about comics and non-binary characters, somebody came in and like if you see the video, there's somebody who came in and like oh. wouldn't let it go, like said it twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I am I am not here for that life. Did you hear me? Did you, Did hear, you hear me? I me? said sexy. I spoke <laughs> to you, thought. <laughs> it's a, thought <laughs> address me. So witness funny. witness me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what we're doing today is something yeah. very special that I didn't want to do. But Anna <laughs> you don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do it. It's weird. What we're doing here is very weird. So we're gonna have a conversation slash interview about some mm-hmm. original characters that we've made, and that's what you're seeing on your screen right now as we're drawing. You're seeing these original characters we've made, who um, they came out of our heads, and you know. One thing I guess I want to lead with is we don't know where these characters come from. We don't really know. And that's something that Neil Gaiman says a lot. And uh, a bunch of of writers and artists say the same thing. It's like when you get these these original characters and these, these creatures and these stories pop out of your head, we would love to claim full responsibility for controlling them, making them, telling their story where they come from. And yes, I mean, I guess there's like this scientific answer um, that they're basically the aggregate of all these stories we've we've seen before and are a mixture of that. But they're also a mixture of our lives, probably. And I guess the short the, the short answer though is that it really is unknowable where these things come from, which is why we're here to talk about uh, yeah. talk about this. And it is special because we are we are creators. And creators are notoriously just what they're they're not they don't talk about this process a lot. So Anna, can you tell I tell like, people a little more about Yeah, I think that uh I, I was just letting you letting you speak because I think that that's, that was a really good point. And like what I wanna add is that these uh these creatures, these uh characters, these friends that we have, uh uh, are a map of influence of uh, the mm. aggregate uh, of the aggregate experiences, uh, media that we've consumed, and all of these wonderful ideas that there are that are sort of part of the how, how do you put it like this creative collective cosmos, almost. It's a. Mm. It's just it's just such a it's just such a wonderful space that I feel like all creative people share in some way in this uh, quasi hive mind, somewhat. Hmm. I, I just I just find it like a, a very special experience to, to to share with so many people, and then and then just and then just once we put it out there in digital space, then uh, uh, then they influence others, and and then those other people are gonna keep on creating. Uh, you know, based on them, and that is, uh, that that is sort of like how an eye of Jeffrey will become like part of uh, the set of eyes of a Cthulhu-esque creature made by some mm. other person. 
<laughs> and perhaps oh, the hand of anxiety right. berry is, uh, you know, tugging at the strings of the heart of some other character. And I, I just, I just can't wait to see uh, what what we do and what they do once, uh, once, once those things um, combine. It's a, it's it's a mystic dance, I believe. <laughs> you can stop well, me I've... if I get too florid. <laughs> I'm gonna first ask you about for the first question. Who are you drawing? Tell us about your character, and then I'm gonna ask you a more detailed question. Well, right now I'm drawing your anxiety berry, and uh, and I will draw Jeffrey some other time. I believe that I just I just wanted to. Dude, I forgot I forgot I was supposed to be drawing Jeffrey. Oh God, no! Don't worry, man. Don't I was, worry. I was working. Oh God, it's just it's just you sent me this like really cool reference, and I immediately had I, to just uh, part from. I've that. never drawn Jeff. I've never drawn Jeffrey, so let me just start that now. I, okay. I fucking no, I, don't totally worry about it. I'm, out. I'm so, so hyped. <laughs> okay, so I'm drawing. I'm drawing Anxiety Berry, and you've told me some stuff about her. You've told me some stuff about more or less where she comes from, but it's always cryptic and unclear because as the necromancer yeah. that you are, you're never gonna tell me the full story, are you? Probably not. Uh, I'm. I've been reading these books about. Um, African art, African art and spirituality and um, specifically stuff about Haitian art and voodoo and all that because, uh, because you know, that's, that's my heritage. That's one of those things where, like, yeah. I'm, I'm allowed to use all that shit. I mean, I'm, I, I have, I have very, like, uh, loose feelings about cult cultural appropriation and all that stuff in terms of, like, I don't, I'm not the appropriation police but i know that this is something that i am allowed to use yeah because, and there's stuff but, that doesn't make you that this stuff wouldn't make you like uncomfortable like this this stuff is is you uh you know trying to reach out to something that is deep within yourself so that's pretty right cool. and one one of the things i learned about um about voodoo and like how how haitians created their own like syncretic mixed religion is like well they they were very they were and are very comfortable with this idea of being a vessel for someone for for gods to fill them up and it's interesting because you see it, like europeans you don't see that as much it's like a very evil thing get away from me to, to be possessed by your gods so yeah. it's interesting to Marry that with our knowledge of D and D and RPGs and stuff. This is basically like sorcerers patron. versus wizard. Yeah. yeah, patrons, sorcerers, wizards. Um, in Harry Potter, for instance, I mean, this is like traditional. Like, and I'm not gonna shit on them, even though I, I do this all the time. Like <laughs> the traditional European style of magic. Um, again, this is not me shitting on them. This is just, but this is me saying that our our traditional uh, concept. I'm going way over time. Yeah, no, don't worry. To, to, to wrap. To wrap this all up, European magic is like I get a stick and I'm like flapping it, and, like, eh, and then the fire comes out of it. Yeah. But I'm interested in different styles of magic. Oh, you mean like like uh, the the only thing that resembles it that I've that I've heard about is the sort of the the gun philosophy that uh that that exists within some pieces of Japanese media where you embody the sword the sword is an extension of yourself instead of how uh, instead of how the gun in like in in an American piece of media would be oh this is a this is an exercise of power so uh, so right. the power that you uh, that you acquire versus the power that you embody yeah. But I don't know. What's in you versus how I... what's in you versus what's outside of you. Mm. The the character I'm drawing right now is Jeffrey. Jeffrey has a very interesting history. Jeffrey first appeared in the Future Late Show, which you can watch at any fucking time. Um, Jeffrey is he's a short red guy with hair, and I'm I'll tell you the first time I saw Jeffrey, and then I'm gonna ask you your first question. Mm. But you know. Future Late Show was very crazy for many reasons. Oh, um, God, yeah. and on the back end, on the back end, it, it was crazy for production reasons where we all really didn't know how to how to work together. But we we made something I think that's pretty. We amazing. made it through. It was uh, it was definitely the power of friendship shining through at the very end. Like we were yeah. tested. Oh Lord, we were tested. <laughs> yeah, but we but we did it because I think I think. 
because we all knew that this thing needed to be made somehow, and it it was made. Yeah. And I I just remember, you know, we were like, oh yeah, let's give Anna a segment, and you just came up with this thing that was so unique and strange, and it was like, what the hell is this? It was about a guy who played D&D with people who weren't there, and it just kept... It, or he was a basically a dungeon master who was a super control freak. Yeah. And he's kind of he's kind of mean and <laughs> kind of dumb. Um, yeah, I love him. He's <laughs> he's such a strange little creature, and uh, and I think he came from like a very sort of deep and personal space, like like from my own experiences with uh, with how friendship can be at times, and and how we are very afraid of. Um, Rejection. I think that that's that's sort of one of the main main characteristics of, of Jeffrey. He came from this space where uh, I was I was afraid of like all of my friends leaving me and like or, or or calling me a fake or a bunch of other stuff. And I was and I was concerned. I was I was really worried. And and like I I actually drew him a couple of times before the Future Light Show. But as mm. uh, as representations of my own anxiety, so I feel like it's it's very sort of topical that your character then is called anxiety very and then there's Jeffrey, and, mm. <laughs> and they represent that, yeah, very personal stuff for us. But yeah, that was gonna be my first question for you: is what is the first drawing you remember making of Jeffrey? Uh, I remember I was uh, I was about to make a difficult phone call and I was uh, and I was getting help from some friends and. Uh, and they said, okay, um, take some time and uh, make a little drawing about how you're feeling at the moment. And it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a red guy who, uh, who looked very intensely at this phone that was ringing. And it was like, uh, it, was just such a, it was just such a scary moment for me. Like, I, 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 I remember being asked, uh, what exactly is it that you're afraid of right now? And I said, it's, uh, it's rejection. It's the... Uh, is that this person is not gonna understand what I'm saying, and or is not gonna want to wish to engage with me at all? So, mm. so that was uh, that was that was the fear, and that was uh, that was what Jeffrey helped with, and he was there sort of like to say, "Hey, I feel it too. I embody it too, but uh, but you don't have to be afraid because there's people around you." Like and and then and then he sort of started telling me about his problems and how like uh, his problems were bigger than mine because uh, nobody actually wanted to speak with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing just his voice in my head. Right yes. Now. Oh God. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> and and I think that like uh, I think that I mean th- this 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 was like way after I met Justin and all of you. So 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 it was in in in, in that amount of time. Uh, post meeting you all and 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 pre like uh, future light show, uh, that's the sort of when when Je- Jeffrey started appearing to me in dreams. He mm. started beckoning me and telling me all about like, oh maybe you should try this new gaming system. Have you tried Dungeon World? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, when did? Oh, okay, I, I'm I'm kind of. All right, I I do have to ask this little question. This little question, Jeffrey is kind of, um, I see him as, I mean, like, you and Justin have joint ownership of him, like, yeah. maybe he started out in your head, but, like, you two are, like, the, you're, you're driving the, um, the mech that is, that is Jeffrey. Oh, you're my God, yes. Like uh. If he's a mech, if he's, like, a, I don't know, you're, you're the architect of, of him, you're... I, I don't I think I think we both we both have very different versions of Jeffrey that coexist oh, in the same okay. universe. Like, and they are both. Because he's valid. his voice. He's he's yeah. like the. He's his voice, and I am his heart. If if I'm gonna put it in a chissy way, it's that. Mm. I feel like I feel like Jeffrey uh, is is both um, can be both very sort of powerful and. Uh, uh, and and overpowering and and intense at times, uh, and and that is that is that is definitely Justin's uh, doing. Like he is he's a person that wants to create things and is an unstoppable force. And to create things, he needs others. And that's that's where I come in. And 
because I am not afraid of, of asking for, for help anymore. And uh, I am trying to uh, slowly but surely, um, you know, gain that confidence. Like, I'm saying this as my voice is wavering. Oh, no. But yeah, mm. but Jeffrey does represent the power of friendship uh, made into, like, uh, made into the, the trope that becomes, uh, that becomes reality. And, and, and he is that wish that I have for all of us that uh to to bring the worst and and best parts of ourselves and uh, and and in in my case is my insecurity and in Justin's mm. case can be like his his raw intensity which is both good and bad <laughs> yeah. yeah and 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 yeah. I love that about about like sort of what what this became and and it's and it's also such a strange thing because like we keep talking about Jeffrey as if he's our son. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps saying, "Oh, look what you did to our son now! <laughs> Why is he so weak?" And I don't see it. I, I don't see him as weak. I see him as this uh, this is strong young man, very very powerful and very beautiful. All right. So the next question I have is, how powerful is Jeffrey really? Because we know he's a summoner mm. or something or something. He's He's like that, a is, uh, that is his power. Yes. Uh, if if I were if I were to describe like what he does is uh, he opens portals uh, in the shape of people. Hmm. They uh, like and and like uh, it, this will be explained in the comic. I am working on the comic currently, and okay. uh, and it is it is basically an origin story for for Jeffrey's powers. And and also about uh, about why does he need the very specific people that he brought to play games with him. Okay. Uh, they they all come from different realms. They all come from different uh, different places. And the key thing about all of them is that loneliness is what binds them. So. Uh, so in in their loneliness they are together and in I guess in their loneliness they will they will either become uh, great or they will die. And that's uh, that's a very sort of bleak way of thinking about them, but uh, but it is basically what they are and uh, what they are meant to do. It's uh, it's to embody and uh, trap loneliness and uh, and mayhaps uh, at some uh, at some point you know uh, be free from it. I don't know. Hmm. I'm just their menstrual. I am not. <laughs> I, I am not them. I'm just them. How do you determine what's canon? How do I determine Jeff? what's canon? I go because I mean, obviously he has red skin, he has yellow hair. There's stuff about his behavior that's like, what is? How do you and Justin determine that? How do we determine it? Uh, we go by by rules of the uh, of of Marvel multiverse. There are several versions of Jeffrey, and Jeffrey has died many times, and and so have oh, their friends. That's why the okay. Future Late Show is completely canon to Jeffrey, but. Uh, Oh, and okay. and at the and at the okay. moment and at the moment Justin is working on an animation where uh, Jeffrey is somewhat of a cowboy, if I can put it that way. That's the only yeah. that I'm gonna give. Yeah. And and so so that's uh so that's the cowboy verse, and that's where that's where Jeffrey has a very set of very important adventures that that will help him grow, and the other versions of Jeffrey as well. And I am creating a version of Jeffrey that uh, that talks about how lonely he is and why he needs his friends, and that version is just as canon. And uh, and we talk about sort of little by little, and it's a it's a renegotiation of uh, of of who he is. But uh, ultimately, I, it it goes in the same sort of homestuck rules as uh, as uh, as the uh, as the people start creating things is that. Um, I am only one of the first people to, you know, create stuff about him, and I know there's going to be several other artists that are going to want to create things about him, and there's going to be a point where I'm not going to be the sole authority. The moment that my flesh vessel dies, uh, it uh, he will belong to everybody else who decides to create him, everybody else who who has him in, in their dreams and in their in their mental space and. Uh, wherever wherever he goes uh he has a home and uh and that's sort of that's sort of it basically like um 
Jeffrey that exists in Justin and Jeffrey that is, exists in me are both as valid and as real and uh, and they and they're both very important and uh, sometimes they fuse when we create things together and sometimes they unfuse sort of like in Steven Universe where like you know you have your mm. gems like so yeah in, in a wow. sense yeah it's weird <laughs> It's the right. Oh <laughs> fuck, dude! I got a haircut appointment in fifteen minutes. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> hey, I was I was enjoying the fuck out of myself. <laughs> Hang on, let me see what my appointment is. Let me check. Oh, it's eleven a.m. We're good. We're oh, okay, hour. nice. I'm, I'm glad that you're. Um, is there an ending to her? I want her to. <sighs> you know what? It's really like I I want to. I want to give her as much of my spirit and energy as I can. And really tell the story of how I how I see her, and I want someone who looks, who looks like her, and who, who uh, sounds like her, to take her and bring her to the next level outside of me. Like that's that's my goal is to make her as make her as powerful and real as I can. And there's some there's some girl out there. I don't know where she is, but there's some girl out there who is going to see this character and it's going to be like, holy shit, I've never seen anything this realized in cartoon animation form with give, and given care. And they're going to see that and they're going to be like, you know what? Like, what if she was in a a desert? She's in a desert somewhere. And, and I'm like, good. Oh, what my else? God. Take you, it. you haven't seen the drawing yet. There is a desert. Man, I drew a desert. You like, can't. Right. Oh, no, my, oh God. my God. No. Really? Oh, my God. I drew a desert with some clouds. Listen, clouds. listen. Um, like, Everybody, oh I, I, just, I just developed my second ability, my second <laughs> Shinigami uh, <laughs> skill. Okay, now I, believe second in, now, I... now I believe in your power. I was questioning we've had, it. We've had these moments on this show. We've had really weird moments <laughs> that we that we have not said publicly. We've oh, had man. weird shit. She's in a desert, really? Yeah, she's she's kind of in a desert. There's like there's like red sand piles, and then the, and then there's like you will oh. see it, and then there's clouds sort of like emerging, and then she's the sun, and she is energy. Like you you'll see it. <laughs> Whoa. That's fucking cool. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, my drawing of Jeffrey is not as uh, it's not as grandiose or uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty. I don't know. I, don't I, know I want I want him to be cute. the butt of the joke every now and then. He needs to be taken down a peg because he thinks that he's everything. Since he's a right. GM, he feels that he's all powerful. I I, I feel like. He he doesn't he doesn't deserve quite the anxiety very treatment. It's okay. <laughs> but that's the thing is you haven't seen my uh my writing of her. She is she's act in my head. <laughs> honestly, she is. I have not at all talked about her personality really. Oh. She's very much like Jeffrey. Yeah. She's not. She's not, I wouldn't call her a nice person. I wouldn't call her, uh, she's not really kind. No, uh, yeah, I did give her, like, a playful grin here, so. <laughs> she's chaotic, she's chaotic neutral. Yeah. Her first thing is pretty much, she's pretty, her first thing is pretty much, how can I benefit from this, from this situation? She's not evil. Like, huh. her sister is, like. Her sister's lawful good. She's like, there's a code. Mm. I have to accomplish this thing. I don't care what like gets in my way. Like, I will accomplish this task. Um, but she's um, she is not that. She's the person who's like, you know, like I I like if there's loot, she's running to the treasure chest and taking everything for herself. Oh my god! And she's gonna try to convince you that like it she it, it's all that it belongs to her. Yeah. Right. I don't think she'd get along with Jeffrey, is it? No, I no, I, I, I don't think so either. Like, like, unless, unless they were co-GMs, I feel like that's the, that's the only way. Yeah. Uh, where, where like both had a position of power and they both uh, had a say on what, on what was happening. I think that then, then, then I think that Jeffrey can, can sort of like give a little bit of more of that, um, of his power and, 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 and of what he says and, and let other people, you know give give ideas i'm almost done with mine what was the name of the D D game because i remember it, it wasn't D D, was it it was something else uh what the of, of the, like the D D game that they, they were playing 
Uh, yeah, and it was then, something else. I was it was friends and tables, but with Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, I know. Friends and tables. It's so sad because it's like the, it, he had a table, but he had no friends. That was the joke. I'm oh, sorry. Right, right, it's right, so right. bad. It's terrible. He had friends a table, table, but no friends. Yeah, I, yeah, it was pretty sad, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but but I like the I like the fact that. He just needed a balancing force, and that's and that's why the delivery boy was there. He was there to deliver, uh, not only not only right. the, the rules of the game, but uh, but I think that the rules of the game it was a metaphor also like for boundaries because it's Jeffrey needs to respect boundaries and and what other people are saying and learn how to communicate better, and 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 in that I think that that that's why that's why the delivery boy is such a good balancing force because. He starts enforcing that and, and, and enacting that as, as a friend and as a person who is also a, a guidance figure. So 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 that's sort of that that's that's the way in which he gets his friends back. Right. Uh, and I do believe that like a lot of people get like very, very lonely very quickly and they're not given a chance and it's like it's because they haven't learned the play rules. And once they start learning them little by little then then they become better people, and and it's easier to get along with them. And I mean, uh, mm. that would be that that would be a good way of uh, of of getting more more of these nerds <laughs> <laughs> to to you know cooperate and and be nicer to each other. All right, I'm almost done with with this thing. I haven't done this classic type of character design in a while. It's very oh, fun. Wow. Um, Let's see. Just about done. All right, we're gonna we're gonna show each other our drawings, and then but before then, Anna, please tell people where they can find you. Okay, people can find me either on Twitter or on Instagram or on uh, even Tumblr ugh, as Anna the Unknown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Okay. Um. Next time we talk, we're gonna we're gonna make your room. All right. <laughs> I'm scared of that. <laughs> it's up to you. I mean, I. All right. I've just sent oh, you wow, inside to Barry. Cool. There, there she All is. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be beautiful. Yellow Aww. skin. That's different. Oh, wow. it's like red and that's yellow. That's really and... cool. <laughs> Damn. I'm glad. <laughs> I dig it. Oh my God! That is Jeffrey. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god, that's so cool! I love his jacket. Oh my god. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Right? Oh, I need to, I need to draw that jacket now. Like, it's, it's so rad. It's the, the freshest outfit he's ever worn. This is beautiful. Thank you, Anna. This is right. a great drawing. Oh, thank you for like this experience. It was really fun to be again back with you in digital space. Yeah. All right, y'all. Don't forget to follow Anna, and we're gonna go back to wherever we were before. Thank you, Anna for that fantastic conversation. And thank you, dear listener slash watcher, for being privy to this conversation, for joining us. Now behind me, I have an interesting drawing of a character, Anxiety Berry, who's been popping up every once in a while in digital space. Will she ever exist in physical space? No, why would that ever happen? Will Anxiety Berry ever be a real? Oh, no, come on, obviously. Anxiety Barry will never come out and exist and speak and talk. That's never happening. So we got an interesting, an interesting conundrum here. We got an interesting quandary. We got Chandler on the ones and twos. And uh, what are we about to do? So in the valet parking chat, which you can only access from patreon.com slash valet. Only patrons, all right? A hey, step back, bro. Step back. Back up. That's what happens when you try to enter the valet parking chat if you're not a patron. Hey, back up, dog. So, Chandler, we had some... Um, tell me what we're about to do. In the valet parking chat, uh, we talked with some of these uh, fellow magicians. And as you know, magicians have a, uh, a dictionary with very charged words. Hmm. Uh, words. And we got some of these today. We asked them for some really good words, and we're going to use them and see how they affect uh, Anxiety Berry. 
All right, great. Uh, what do you got? Let's make some runes. Let's make some charged runes and see if we can charge up Anxiety Berry. For what purpose? I'm not sure. And hopefully she doesn't happen to come alive or something from this strange spell that I'm about to create. Yeah. But, you yeah, know. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be weird. Very <laughs> weird. All right, so... um, uh, The first one that came in, which is from uh, Conjurer Ringled Dinksbud. Okay. Is Machine. Machine. All right, so I guess I got to draw a machine, some kind of cog. I think we have a. It looks it looks very cog-ish, what I'm drawing right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and add some more, some more gears to this here, to mm -hmm. to finish this gear motif. I fucked up right there. That's fine. You know these sigils don't have to be perfect. They just have to be, uh, intent intent made. Um. Anxiety Berry is actually on the mid-tier, mid to high tier in terms of tech users for the Pantheon, pantheon of characters I've created. Uh, Anxiety Berry really enjoys technology. She is a big user of Pain Forest products. She has Pain Forest Death. She has Pain Forest Life installed on her Dream Shard. She uses Pain Forest <laughs> Voice, Pain Forest Search, Pain Forest Shop. Um, yeah, she's really into it. She doesn't really care about the social implications of Pain Forest and the fact that they are basically um, grinding up people's souls and memories in order to become a multi-dimensional conglomerate made out of magic and technology. But yeah, but she also, um, one thing I haven't mentioned in public, but she is really into um, melee weapons and that's kind of, kind of her first thing. So we're talking machinery. I don't think the melee weapons that she uses are machine based, so she wouldn't hit you with a chainsaw. She likes blunt objects. So if a blunt object could have any machinery attached to it, she'd probably use that first. Chandler, are there any blunt objects, melee objects that are machine machinery based or infused? Uh, maybe something like a uh, power fist. All right, power fist, fantastic. She would use one of those, like a pain forest power fist, which I'll I will doodle in the corner here. So, um, how many Rhodesian children do it, does it require to produce one pain forest power fist? Um, it doesn't require the children. It requires their memories and their dreams specifically. I want sure. to make that clear. They're not using their bodies. It's a lot more nefarious. They use your mind energy, your stories, especially unused stories. So it takes the dreams and memories of about... Uh, 30 Rhodesian children from a period of about like 30 days of their memories to create uh, a dream shark, a power fist specifically. All right, what was the next term we had? Small price to pay. Yeah, small. Uh, the, Very the, the, next, the next one we have from uh, myself. I, I, I'm not a big magician, but I do dabble on the side. Okay. And I only have access to about like 10 words, but I, I like this one. Okay. It is latrine. Now, a latrine is obviously a toilet. It's obviously like a bathroom, but it's specific, right? Latrine, correct me if I'm wrong, is usually like, it's usually applied to barracks or like a submarine or some kind of like facility, mm. right? It's a very bare bones. Really might just even just be a toilet. So if I'm thinking toilet, I'm... I'm thinking about waste and I'm thinking mm -hmm. about the stuff that Anxiety Berry doesn't want to keep around. The stuff that she is just trying to either um, suppress willingly, suppress emotionally, uh, psychologically stuff that she wants to not, not be engaged with. Um, so we're, gonna, we're thinking about nose here. We're thinking about, uh, one of the things that actually people don't know, all right, but I'll tell you guys this, it's a secret, but mm -hmm. you know how you have a recycle bin in Windows operating system, right? You got a trash bin, I believe, in the, uh, Apple operating systems. I don't know what the fuck they use for Linux. In the new Pain Forest OS that's coming out uh, next year, they actually Very are... Exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. They're they're introducing the latrine. So the latrine, this is the logo that they're going to be using for that OS. So 
Um, the stuff that Anxiety Berry is trying to throw away is she's not really a person who thinks about the past. Thinking about the past makes her very anxious. Um, she doesn't, although that's her name is Anxiety Berry, she doesn't really get anxious about many things. She's just very kind of hyper. Thinking about the past and thinking about past obligations and things that she said she was going to do um, really stress her out. So those are the kinds of things she'll throw into the latrine. Um, also, things that require her to be selfless, uh, she would like to throw into the latrine. She's a very selfish person by nature. I'm removing connotation from this. It doesn't mean that this is a good or bad thing. It just means that that's kind of when any situation comes up, she'll be nice to you if she can see some way for her to benefit from it. That's just kind of how she approaches everything. All right. Great word. Great rune that we just created here. What else do we got, Chum? Next up, we have a word from a level 8,000 mixologist. Hmm. Um, <laughs> lowest Heaven gives us the word codeine. Codeine. That's a tough one. So we're thinking about drugs. We're thinking about uh, the stuff that they that they put in lean, right? Um, mm -hmm. For that, I'm going to... I'm going to make this sigil right here. We're thinking specifically about addictions. What is Anxiety Berry addicted to? She unfortunately is addicted to stuff. She is the most materialistic on a physical sense uh, out, of, out, of, out of everyone. She, is, she likes things. She likes magical items um, that can allow her to sort of further her needs. Her latest addiction, the latest item that she's been super impressed by is this white orb that I'm drawing, or this representative of the white orb. It's a white orb that she stole from someone that I'm not at liberty to say, because she'll probably kill me. That's if she ever became alive, which she won't, right? Mm, of course. This thing allows her to teleport. Uh, it allows her to teleport to other dimensions, and that's something that she's been using a lot to escape her sister, who has been after her for a while, not in a negative way, just to kind of rekindle the relationship. Um, she's been using this to escape to and from places. I think it might have a negative aspect, uh, a negative effect on her personality and her willpower, but I'm not sure, but that's the thing that she's addicted to. So we'll make that sigil. What else we got, Chandler? Moving last forward. Last word. Yes, last word. We have Someone that you might have just heard, a little a little person known as Anna the Unknown. Anna the Unknown, yes. Continues to give to us this episode. Gives us the word. Magazine. Magazine. All right. So we're going to zoom in real close. To me, magazine, um, first let's draw Anxiety Berry's brain, which is... Um, Actually, that's wrong. One thing that people uh, probably don't know about Anxiety Berry is her brain is split into half. There's stuff that's happening in the in the in between space that um, I'm not really privy to, but I do know is that she has two halves to her brain. It's literally split down the middle. Most of us, obviously, the left and right hemisphere are connected, and these things co um, communicate. But her brain is really truly split. Totally um, split. Yes. And on one side of the brain, I forgot which one, but it sort of deals with more of like the entertainment and pleasure side. So let's isolate that by saying that it's this segment, right? And when I hear magazine, I'm thinking about what does she read for pleasure? Um, Anxiety Berry is very much goal oriented in the sense that anything that will allow her to get more stuff get her to more adventures, quests. She wants action. She wants to know who she's going to have the punch in the face to continue her quest and her journey. She's not really into talking her way out of situations. She is much more likely to fight her way out of a situation. That's kind of where she lives. So she's uh, subscribed to Melee, Melee Users Monthly. Um, also, Gun Owners... Um, fighter. Is she part of the NRA? Probably not. NRA doesn't exist oh, okay. in her in in her in her world. I don't think she she doesn't really like associations. I think she would understand. Mm. 
I think she'd be like, oh, I get it, but she doesn't really like being part she of a crew. She wouldn't be a card holder. No, she wouldn't be a part of any crew. Um, she'd probably want to be like, oh, can can you give me some guns? But I'm not I'm not joining your thing. Um, the last thing is fighters. When I say fighters, I mean obviously fighter, mage, rogue. She's a fighter. She has very low magic, super high HP, super high con, super high strength. Um, yeah, those are the magazines that she would subscribe to. And we got ourselves a nice, cool image filled with sigils that we made with your questions. I'm sorry, your words, your suggestions. This is beautiful. Thank you, Chandler. Sure. Thank you. All right, friends. That's an episode. This has been Dom Sketchcast. I've been dumb. I want to shout out the people who made this possible, who put up with me every week. Shout out to Anna for having that conversation with me. And what I didn't say is that Anna has been talking to me about this for months. And um, yeah, they had this idea about getting deep into these characters and I'm glad I did it. I was scared to do it. I'm still kind of uncomfortable with the fact that I went that deep into it and told you all about it. But I, I mean, they also they also opened up a lot about Jeffrey. So that was cool. Uh, thank you, Anna. Thank you to Chandler for being on the ones and twos. Thank you to Ryan for being the editor. Thank you to Justin for making the great ethereal music as usual coming through with that stuff. Thank you, dear listener. Thank patrons for being here. Thank you once and for all. Okay, hope to see you on the next episode.